if we are asked to, to draw a timing diagram for an ideal combinational circuit, and here ideal means that we pretend that the output to a logic gate changes as soon as the input changes. Of course, this is not true in real life, and we will worry about that later, but for now, let's consider ideal logic gates. So we're given a combinational circuit here. We are given the input waveforms, so time goes across here, and so A is initially zero, then it becomes one, falls back to zero, etc. Same with B. B is initially zero, then it rises to one, so time goes from left to right. We're given the inputs, we want to know what the output C is. So the first thing we do is that we have a look to see when the inputs change. And we see that an input changes down here at this time instance, and 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 at this time instance. The output C can only change when one or more of the inputs changes. So we only have to figure out what's happening on either side of these yellow lines. Between these yellow dotted lines, the output C has to be constant. Now there's several ways this can be done. Um, I guess a slow and steady way would be for each region here, I can write down the values of A and B. So initially, A and B are 0, 0. Next, A is 1, B is 0. Next, A is 0, B is 0. Next, A is 0, B is 1. Then both A and B are 1. And finally, A is 0, B is 1. For each of these, I need to work out what the output C is going to be. So I need to know the truth table for this circuit. You can, of course, do this in your head, but let's be slow and steady. If it was a much bigger circuit, I would not do the truth table because we would not need to know all the possible um, states because it's unlikely that the inputs would, would, would vary in such a way if, if this was a, a, a question given in class it will be unlikely that you'd have to consider so many states. Anyway, uh, A, B, not, 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 one, one, not, one, one. Just to be clear, that's A, that's B, and we want to know what C is equal to. So if A and B are both zero, the output of the exclusive OR is going to be zero, and so the output of this AND gate is going to be zero. So I know a zero goes here. We can continue in this way, or we can try to be a little bit smart about what we're doing. So to be smart, what we need is to ask ourselves, how can the output C be a one? Because this guy at the end here is an AND gate, we know that normally it's zero, only one out of four cases will, will it give us a one. So let's ask, when can the output be a one? So we're trying to be smart here to save time. So when can the output here be a one? For this to be a one, both inputs have to be a one. This means already that B has to be equal to one. And what about A? Well, for this exclusive OR gate to give me a one at the output, its inputs have to either be 0, 1 or 1, 0. But because B is a 1, I know that the only way to get a 1 at the output is if A is 0 and B is a 1. So I've therefore managed to figure out that the truth table looks like this. Now, for more complicated circuits, maybe you can't do this. You can always just do it the slow way. Just go through line by line put this input in, follow through the traces, see what you get. Put this input in, follow through, see what you get. Put the input in, follow through, see what you get. But sometimes you can play tricks like this if you want to. Okay, great. So we've got our truth table now. 
and we want to draw the timing diagram for it given these particular waveforms at the input. So all we do is work out when the input changes. Between the changes, we work out the values of the inputs, what A and B are. And finally, we just have to read off the answer from the truth table. So again, to do this in two steps, firstly, I read off the value from the truth table. I see that initially I've got 0, 0 going in, and so I've got 0 coming out. So C is going to be 0. 1, 0 means 0 is coming out from the truth table. 0, 0 means 0 is coming out. 0, 1 means that a 1 is coming out here. A 1, 1 means a 0 is coming out. And a 0, 1 means that a 1 is coming out. So all that remains is to draw this trace. So C is initially 0. It stays 0 after the first change. It stays 0 after the second change. It jumps up to a 1 here, jumps back to a 0 here, and finally jumps up to a 1 here. And that's it. Relatively straightforward.